Welcome to a guitar training that I know has the potential to truly change the path you are on right now. Today we will go into a method and a mindset that will help you learn with a revealing lesson with our teachers here. I'll also unveil a secret that we have here at the studio that helps every student in the learning process. My name is Daniel Powers Jr. I'm the founder, chief inspirer here at Real Brave, and I thank you for bringing me into your world, letting me introduce you to the secrets we hold dear here at the studio. I would put my money on what I'm about to say. You've always wanted to play guitar. You want to be successful at it, right? It's a life's goal. Maybe it's part of a bucket list. To me, you love online instruction. That's why you're here right now. It gives you the flexibility to concentrate more. Maybe learning online gives you the opportunity to take lessons anytime and anywhere. Plus, you can concentrate more when it comes to learning online than it takes for you to take lessons in person. As long as you find something that works for you, nothing will stand in the way of you getting that information, any video files, or instruction tools. And me, well, I'm just really excited to be here with you today. Whether you're already playing guitar, thinking about starting, today my coworkers and I will reveal a foolproof system for learning chords and starting soloing the right way, introduce you to a method that will get you going, and an in-depth look at a tool so powerful that thousands of people currently use it, and now you can too. So let's pause here and put some of this method into practice. Let's get you some much needed help on your instrument with two of my favorite instructors here at Real Brave. Kevin will show you how to fret those annoying chords, show you basic understanding of their relationship in an ingenious and simple way. Then Don will give you a leg up on a simple and easy to understand soloing concept that will get you going right now. Let's tune in, plug in, and rock to some awesome teaching. Uh, we're here today to do some guitar lessons, guitar chords specifically, with sound. And uh, today we have Kevin here, he's going to be talking about chords, chord progressions, and all sorts of stuff. Really tremendous information that you're going to be getting in addition to any lessons that you're taking with us. And today is all about chords, how to play them, how to put them together, why, maybe not too much why, and uh, <laughs> all that. Uh, so. Without further ado, we have Kevin here, who is going to take you on the magical journey of chords. Kevin? Thank you, Dan. And it's so great to be on the Real Brave stage here in Oakland, New Jersey. Sure. Um, uh, now with sound. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hello now viewers. updated with sound. <laughs> now with sound. Um, hello, viewers. Uh, today we're talking about chords. And first, what is a chord? A chord is three or more notes. Right, um, and I'm going to avoid talking about the theory. Those of you who know me know I'm a big theory nerd, and so I'm going to try my best to steer clear of that and just tell you that it's three or four notes, any three or four notes, they all are chords. Even this one. Even this one. Even uh, this one. Uh, but we're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the basics. We're going to talk about the regular open chords, and now. These are the chords. So if you've ever taken a first lesson with me specifically, uh, this will all feel and sound very familiar because this is the first lesson I give to my guitar students. Um, and the reason is the easiest way to like hit the ground running with these handful of chords, pun intended, um, we can definitely, like right out of the gate, start playing music. Um, I know it sounds like a 12 order, so we're just going to take it one at a time. These eight chords, you can play uh, like 90% of uh, rock or pop or folk or country music. Actually, no, probably 100% of country music. Um, in fact, these are also known as the cowboy chords. Um, these are chords you sit around the campfire and you go you know, with your 10 gallon hat and your spurs and uh, your can of beans. Um, these chords will allow and facilitate all of that stuff, right? So let's just dive right in. We're going to look at the first chord. It is an E major chord. And we can see, looking at the diagram, that we've got three fingers on this one, uh, one, two, and three, or in order from left to right. 
2, 3, and 1. So our second finger, or our middle finger, goes on to the second fret of the A string. Our ring finger goes to the third, second fret of the D string. And our index finger is going to go to the first fret of the G string. And just those three notes alone is a chord. Uh, but you'll notice also that we've got those O's above the strings, above the nut. Um, and that means that those E, B, and E are also open. So this chord is all six strings right there. Now a little bit of notes on technique. You'll notice that my fingers are arched. I'm pressing the strings just before the frets. I'm not on the frets, and I'm not way far back. It's right before the fret. That's how I'm going to get the best resonance out of the strings. My thumb is towards like the middle of the back of the neck, um, below, and so providing support for uh, all my other fingers there. Um, my fingers are arched uh, so that they don't, they're coming from above, not behind, so that they don't actually accidentally block the strings. Proper technique says coming from above. And that's why my thumb is so low. It's going to allow my fingers to arch more. My wrist is um, straight but relaxed. I'm not contorting any sort of way to try to orient my fingers. It's nice and relaxed but firm grip right there on the, on the, on the, uh, the chord there. And that's my E major chord. Now. We're going to move on to the next chord. And now we can pull up the, uh, the second slide, E major to A minor. This is not a theory. There's no theory. There's no music theory behind these switches. It's, it's purely geographical as far as the uh, fretboard goes. Um, so what I like to do is I like to try to find the closest relationship between the chords and move in that relationship. So you'll notice that the shape of your fingers, the shape and order of your fingers, is the same for both of these chords. You got two, three, one on the E. You've got two, three, one on the A, but each finger is moved down one string. And the only other difference on this one here is that you'll see the X above the low E string, which means we do not play that string. So we're going to strum this one from the fifth string down. So we're moving each of our fingers down one string, and we strum from the A string down now. And we have an A minor chord. Again. Arched fingers, fingertips, I can show you where, uh, which camera, this one, I can show you where the uh, indents on my fingers are, and you'll see that that's the imprint of uh, where the string is. It's kind of diagonal going toward my uh, fingernails, and that's fine. And that's my A minor chord. So, so far, two chords. And we'll talk in future uh, broadcasts about the mechanics of moving quickly and fluently between each chord. But right now, we're just mapping it out so that we know what each chord is and how to get there. For the next chord, we only need to move one finger. And you can see this in the, uh, the next slide. We're moving from A minor to C major. And all I have to do is move my ring finger and reach it up to the third fret of the A string. And again, X above the E string means don't play it. So I've got three ring finger on the third fret of the A, middle finger on the second fret of the D, open G, index finger still on the first fret of the E, nope, sorry, B, and open E. Now I strum it from the fifth string down. Here's my C major chord. Now, a lot of people might start with this chord because it's C major and there's a whole lot of theory as to why it's like the chord. But again, not a theoretical map. It's a geographical map of the fretboard. So just with the three chords that we've got so far, C, E major, A minor, that's probably a song. I don't know what song it is, but it sounds familiar, doesn't it? Kind of. Um, between the last two, C major and A minor, there we've got a little Leonard Cohen, Hallelujah, uh, probably a whole bunch of other songs too. Um, we'll keep going now. So we're moving now from C major. 
Uh, we're, now we've, when I talk about chords, sometimes I'll talk about anchor points, right? So uh, an anchor point is a commonality between two chords where that finger doesn't move. So anchor points between A minor and C would include middle, middle and uh, index finger, right? So these two don't move, ring finger moves. There's an anchor point between the next two chord group, which is C, C major to E minor. Um, that anchor point is the middle finger. So that one's going to stay on, and then I'm going to bring my index finger to the second fret of the A string, and then you'll see the open. Every other string is open, E, G, B, and E. And that's my E minor chord. So there's the motion again from C major, keeping my middle finger down. That's going to guide me to E minor. Now, um, there are, this is, these, what I'm showing you right now, there's lots of different ways to play chords. I can play E minor with my first two fingers, my second two fingers, my uh, third and fourth finger. Um, this is rare, but it, it does serve a function uh, that we'll eventually get to. But just for the purpose of what we're doing right now, just meeting and understanding and placing the chords, this is how we're going to do this one. Uh, fun fact, the last two chords, the intro to Space Oddity. Ground control to major tom. Ground control to major tom, I think. Um, moving right along. No anchor points between the next two chord group, which, by the way, is E minor to A major. Um, there's no anchor points here. This is the vertical one, if you, if you see it in there. Um, but we are going to start by just keeping this shape, this relative position of index and middle finger. We're going to move it down one string. We're going to now add the ring finger to the third fret of the B string. And we'll notice the X above the E, the low E, and we'll strum from the A string down. And there we have a nice happy A major chord. Now with this one, you'll recall me saying that you want to try to get as close to the fret as possible. Um, and that operating, operative term there is as possible because with three fingers on three uh, consecutive strings all along the same fret, it's kind of impossible to get them all close together just like that. And we're not going to talk about bars yet. Um, but for an A major, it's okay to have them sort of stacked diagonally. To where you can still hear each note. Uh, first two chords right there is moving from E minor to A. Run, rabbit, run. Pink Floyd fans, I'm sorry. Dig that hole, escape the sun. Right, so already we're seeing a lot of uh, two chord relationships in popular music. Um, with the, 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 I guess, the five that we've gone over so far, um, there's, you can, there's, I'm sure there's an algorithm online where you could just put in five chords and see which songs use them, and there's a bunch. Um, moving to the next chord in the sequence, we're going to uh, A major. We're from an A major. Here's where we are. And we'll notice that we're really crammed in here in the second fret. Our ring finger wants to escape so badly. So we're actually, we're going to let him. He's going to creep up to the third fret. Ah, now we got room to breathe. We're not done yet. We're going to move our middle finger all the way to the bottom string, second fret, keep it on the second fret, and we're going to move our index finger down one string. Now we've got the chord shape. We're going to not strum the top two, the low two strings. Uh, we're going to strum this one from the D string down. Well, we've got a D chord. Wouldn't you know it, that's all it is. Um, between E, A, and D, that's our 12 bar blues. Uh, between um, E, D, and C, that's. Uh, all along the watchtower, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
there's a D major chord. Once again, A major. Scoot a ring finger up a fret, bring the other two fingers down. We're at D major. Now this next one is, there's the, the least, I would say, connection between the D major and the next chord we're going to. But we can still sort of um, draw a lot of uh, relationships. First, we're going to start by ring finger going down a string. Our middle finger is going to mirror it. So it's going to reach all the way to the top string, going to the third fret. Our index finger is going to want to tag along there, but he's not going to quite make it. He's going to fall short one string and one fret. And here we are, have arrived at G major. Now, if you're a, uh, if you're a fan of country, or folk, this might be where you want to start with this word map, which is cyclical, by the way. Um, uh, and you might see lots of different fingerings, or one in particular different fingering for this one, which uses the pinky down at the bottom string. And that's totally acceptable given a certain context. But for what we're doing again, D major to G. Now, to our last chord in the sequence, we're going to bring these top two fingers, we're going to bring them down one fret, I'm sorry, down one string, and back one fret. Ring finger, which moved along with them, is going to move up two strings, so it's now at the second fret of the G string. We got the introduction of the pinky finger. Hello, pinky finger. I know you've been waiting to use the pinky finger. We're very excited to plop it down. Second fret of the E string. We've got an open B and a not strummed E, and that brings us to B7. Now B7 sort of might seem like it doesn't really have a place in this, um, but it does, uh, both theoretically and geographically, as we see here. Lots of songs that use this. Um, but that's our B7. Seven chord is like, it's bluesy, it's got a bluesy feel to it. Um, there's a lot of application of it, a lot of theoretical application of it too. Um, but that's it, that's how you play it. <laughs> so middle finger, second fret of the A, index finger, first fret of the D, ring finger, second fret of the G, open B, pinky finger, second fret of the E. Strummed it, strummed from the A string down. And we got one more to go, one more switch to go. We're gonna throw our pinky out of here. We're going to switch our ring finger with our index finger as far as where they are on the strings. And now we'll find that we've come full circle back to E major. Now at this stage in the game, you should be aiming for some good tone, and that comes from applying that arch finger technique, thumb in the middle of the back of the neck, finger tips used to press down on the strings just before the frets. Um, as we go forward, tone becomes less important than the actual mechanics of moving from chord to chord, because that tone, with enough practice, will re resurge and uh, be nice again. But just to recap where we've gone, where we've been and where we went and where we are again, E major. A minor, C major, E minor, A major, D, G, B7, E. Almost all of the chords that we just went over through were right there. Um, again, 90% of music now you'll be able to play uh, with these chords. Um, that's... Uh, <sighs> That's a really quick way to get out of the gate and to play some music. Um, is there more to the story? Absolutely. Is, there, is this the tip of the iceberg as, as far as chords go? Yes. Um, there's, there's much, much, much more uh, we can go on into. We're not even talking about the right hand really that much. We're just talking about how to place these chords. Um, but it's a, it's a really good start for anybody interested in just playing music.
everybody, welcome to Guitar Soloing. Here with Don, here at Real Brave, uh, of course on Practice Pad. And, uh, today we're going to be talking about a couple different things. Soloing improv, riffs with the pentatonic, right? What's a riff? Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The pentatonic minor scale, a natural minor scale with two notes emitted, perhaps the most utilized scale in all of rock guitar playing. From early blues guitarist to modern day hard rockers, the pentatonic scale is a staple. Notice how this pattern is actually a natural minor scale with the second and the sixth notes missing. If you don't know that, we'll cover that some other time. Many things can be done to spice up the scale. Extra notes to bend strings, hammer-ons, and numerous other techniques. But for now, we're going to be becoming comfortable with the sound and sequence of these historically important five notes. Here's a comprehensive view of the pentatonic minor scale on the guitar. And you can see the top and the bottom here. One is one position, and on the bottom it's just you can play it all over the fretboard. I'm here with Don Albert, the, ex the guitarist extraordinaire, the person that I owe, I owe my life to, maybe, in the, the music sense. <laughs> he didn't bring me into this world, but you know, so might as well. Pressure, man. A lot of pressure, but uh, no, you're in good hands here. Don, take it away. Okay, well, soloing can, can be done. And it's not that hard if you have a scale to work out of. It's, it's like training wheels in a sense. You can just kind of follow along the scale and play something and it'll sound okay. And, uh, but I basically felt that the way to do that is to just understand that the very basic things that we use to get started on soloing are really the same things that we use when we're very proficient at, at soloing. And we start usually with the knowledge of a scale or two because it's easier that way. We could certainly jump into the water and say, I'm only going to play notes as I hear them in my head before I do the purist, P-U-R-I-S-T way. Uh, but most of us find out about the pentatonic scale and we're super excited because, whoa. And as guitarists we're listening to, doing riffs out of it and we're like oh yeah that, that I can do that so there's our pentatonic scale and um, there's a more involved version of it on the bottom we can eventually get very good but even when we just start with those scales we're finding notes that sound good while we're trying to play some sort of solo over some chords or some song and they're not hard to find when we have this laid out for us so I look at that and I say, well, you know, as long as I understand that the bottom one is the low E string, the uh, bottom red note of the first diagram is the low E string, I can start on any fret I want. So I'm going to start on the 10th fret here. I'm going to start on this note because that note is D. And I'm going to play this pattern, first finger, fourth finger, three frets higher and then the next string, this one, and I can very easily get, get to know those notes. I might not play them quickly, but I'll be able to play them when I want to play them. So now, how do I find the notes that sound good out of that? So let's say we're hearing the chord. This I'm playing on the 10th fret because I'm presuming a key of D minor, just because there's a lot of good songs that you learn early on in D minor. It's uh, a really nice, nice chord so if you're playing a D minor chord an open one here on the first fret there's a diagram of it it should be there it is it's the how do you uh, battleship this it's B2 <laughs> <laughs> second column second row D minor really really nice graphic say so how do I play something that sounds good over this out of D pentatonic. 10th fret, the pattern that we showed. Well, that sounds kind of good to begin with. Just those notes played straight. But I can't play them that fast yet because I'm just starting. Find the one that sounds the best with your D minor chord. The best to you at that moment. That first one, whoops. I shake it a little bit with vibrato. If I can't do vibrato, I just play it. Well, at least it sounds good. 
this one sounds good too. But the notes that are going to sound the most consonant, it's the music theory term for this, uh, the least conflicting, and there are waveforms to, to show how this happens, but the ones that are most consonant are the root, which if the chord is D minor, the root is D, and this note is D, and the first note of your pentatonic scale is the root. The root, the fifth, which is actually the fourth note up of this scale, but we'll talk about why we call it the fifth later. That note, and then the octave, which is the same as the root. Do, 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 mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then there's a high one. In other words, all the Ds in this scale, this note's a D, this note's a D, this note's a D, they're all roots. So if the chord is, And I play, whoops, I better get to D. Even without the vibrato, I could hammer it on. I could slide to it. And then that's that. That's Don Henley now, right? Just that one note, the root, sounds a bit authoritative. It sounds like I know what I'm doing. Even if I really don't, I just know this scale, and I know that these are the roots, and they're highlighted in color in the diagram. And here's the high one. So if you're hearing... You can slide to it. If I can't slide, just play it. Play it a few times. If I know how to bend from the previous note of the pentatonic scale, I can say... And it's such a solid note for that chord because it's the root. The chord is based on this note. Here it is. First note of a D minor scale, D. First bottom note of the chord if you're in root position, D. And anything I do with those three Ds in the pentatonic scale, those three roots, it's going to sound, yeah, but I've already got a Neil Young solo going there, just playing the roots and hammering them like that. And I could get to the fifths. And I might find that when I go, that I like the way that one sounds. That's the third, but we don't even have to know that these are roots, thirds, and fifths. We can just play them and say which one sounds good when they're going. What if I say, that's the one I want to hear. Even without knowing it's the third. I go from there to there and... It's already starting to sound like something. That's playing this one and this one at the same time. You can accidentally start playing things that sound good. And if you don't judge yourself, and you just let that happen, the natural boredom of playing the same notes over and over again is going to get you to try other ones and now we're exploring the scale and getting a feel for it. And that's just a one chord, one scale, and as soon as we're listening to what we're doing, we're on our way toward the highest levels of that, which is Eric Clapton. He'll take a pentatonic scale. You could listen to it for an hour, the way he plays it. And we're, we realize that once we're doing that, that we're, we're actually on the road. It's not, this is not good enough and that's great. It's the same thing and just getting better and better at it. And that's the fundamental sense of using a pentatonic scale for soloing without anything fancy. I didn't have any riffs in there yet, just a tiny bit of pieces of riff. And there are those three red notes. Those are my roots. That's just the, that's the super safe places. You know, it's rock climbing at first. You find something that you can totally hang on to and trust. And you reach for some other things. That was gonna be the fifths and the thirds. And if you don't think about what they're called, it's just which notes do I like? Which ones do I feel safe on? Which ones don't really sound right for this? And that's, that's the, the core of uh, everything from Larry Carlton's incredibly tasteful soloing to a great heavy metal solo to uh, really any kind of soloing you can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of what Don was doing there was in the same position. And uh, believe it or not, I'm going to put that up here. Uh, you can stay in the same position, meaning like on the same fret, learn these scales, and 
develop riffs. Riffs are just like a couple notes put together. That's a real simple version of what the definition is. But you develop riffs, and it's and he was explaining really well. Like you can go once it changes, once you understand this, okay. All you gotta do is shift just a little bit, understand that scale, right at this level, right? We're just learning, and before you know it, you are putting together like a solo, and you can improvise over that. It just takes time. Just do the riff. I mean, do the scale over like a song. You know what key it's in, and those are three great examples or two great examples of of songs. You know what the key they're in, and when to switch. And um, Don, thank you for uh, that uh, introduction that window into that world. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, great. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll end it here. And uh, this has been Guitar Soloing 2. Uh, join us next time for uh, some more intro into Guitar Soloing. Thank you. Thank you, Don and Kevin. Those videos are just the start here at the base of this hill that we have to climb when it comes to learning guitar. What if you were able to get live online in-person lessons, meaning instructors like Don and Kevin were live on your device, answering your questions and coaching you like a live in-person lesson using the common sense, real brave method of discovery deconstruction, and development in every single lesson while you play your favorite songs. Well, for the first time ever, we are revealing our groundbreaking online learning environment. Now you can take lessons at Real Brave anywhere in the world by using our online learning environment that gives you the powerful video and recording tools so you can learn an instrument of your choice, guitar, in the comfort of your own home. At Real Brave here, our online lessons are powered by PracticePad. It's technology that we developed. Real Brave powered by PracticePad is an incredible resource for students and teachers that combines hundreds of video tutorials and assignments with live one-on-one -on -one teaching powered by our PracticePad Live Video Tech. Stuff that we developed here at the studio and you can't get it anywhere but here. But before I go into all the details that tells you how to get instant access to Real Brave, powered by PracticePad today, I'd like to have Kevin show you why this tool is so powerful and helps you avoid all the mistakes that we went over just before. With Real Brave, powered by PracticePad, you can learn on your own pace online. Let's check it out. Uh, here on the screen with us, uh, we're being joined by uh, Kevin. Kevin's an instructor here at Real Brave. Uh, you may have seen him on a uh, tutorial or two, and uh, we're here to talk about this this tool that we have uh, up on the screen. It's a video tool where you can have your lesson and learn one on one, and on the other side of the screen, you've got a bunch of content that you can uh, leverage in your lesson. It's a unique tool that we use here at Real Brave. How, how does PracticePad? help a person learn how to play the guitar? Uh, tremendously. An instructor tells you what to practice, a good in instructor tells you how to practice, and a great instructor will inspire you to practice going uh, using the correct methods to build proper technique in the process, right? And PracticePad is the tool you use to help get all of that content across. But with PracticePad, it's like you get to take the lesson home with you. So whether it's like a... Uh, part of a song or part of a uh, scale or a specific technique, left hand, right hand. I'm showing it to you, and like I showed you before, I, I record it, and here's the proper way to play this, whatever it is, and I can slow it down. Watch how my fingers are arched. Watch how my thumb is in the middle of the back of the neck. I can make note of all of these different little points of technique so that when we practice, we're practicing correctly, not doing more harm than good in the long run. Yeah. There it is. Guys, Real Brave Online is amazing. Thousands of people have used it to get great results. And here are a few. I started off struggling with like simple chords. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even play a C when I started. Um, and now, like, with, like, the videos, 
now like I've come a long way I can play bar chords I can play like a lot of picking stuff and I can start to sing and play too and your videos being able to watch them on practice pad and being able to play along and being able to like look at you updating the notes real time during like the COVID situation yes. it's all really helpful and uh it definitely helped me come a long way and I'm so much better than <laughs> I'm nowhere near where I started so you just keep working on this it's gonna come I'm going to sign that, that chord to you. Oh, look, it's a lot better than what it was a few weeks ago. At least I can I can make four or five of them. Yeah. Now, so, yeah, I'm happy with the progress. It's good. Great work today. Absolutely keep working on that solo in California Dreaming. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And start looking at this. You'll, you'll find it in the Assigned Challenges section of your profile. Okay. All right. Great job, Sandy. I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, just to see those reactions. I mean, we've been developing this technology for over five years. And over the past year, we've really pushed it up because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And Real Brave Powered by Practice Pad is really special. I mean, you're here because you get a lot out of online instruction. It gives you the flexibility to concentrate more. Learning online gives you the opportunity to take lessons anytime and anywhere, and we like that, right? Plus, you can concentrate more when it comes to learning online than you can than taking lessons in person. As long as you can find someone that gets you, nothing will stand in your way of getting ahead. Here's what you get with online lessons with us. It has the following benefits. You could see yourself actually playing, and this is a feature actually you can't get anywhere else increases your ability to learn and play at a pace that you choose. Lessons at Real Brave provide a record of progress you make relative to any expectations. And we include a clear set of activities you can choose to practice at your own pace. We generate a visual and recorded document that shows you what to focus on, any actions needed to improve. And Real Brave Powered by Practice Pad, these lessons enables you to take lessons from home and get the same benefits as you would at the studio. You want to learn guitar, right? That's why you're here. Not only can you take the concepts and the models we have learned right here on your own, you can go further and we can help you apply it right now using the online learning environment that we developed. So with all the tips we've given you here and showing you how we've taught over 10,000 people using the Real Brave method and our practice pad technology, I'm confident this path that I am putting before you is solid. The process is the Real Brave method. Learning, using discovery, deconstruction, development. The path is using our online in-person platform practice pad, or Real Brave, powered by practice pad. Thousands of people, hundreds of performances cannot be wrong. I am confident that this is the way forward for you. One of the reasons that students stick with Real Brave is because we get them results using our philosophy, we're mentors to them, and our approach to music lessons is what they like. It's kind of like guaranteed learning. When you decide to sign up for lessons at Real Brave powered by PracticePad today, you can get instant and immediate access for free. For a limited time, you can get access to a free trial so you can experience the power of Real Brave powered by PracticePad for yourself. And we'll give you a free consultation with one of our desk agents to match you with an instructor, and then we'll set you up for a free lesson using our PracticePad live video technology. So you can work on whatever you need with your instructor. We've seen the amazing results that students have been able to achieve in less time than they thought possible, which is why we're confident that once you experience this for yourself, that you would want to stay member for life. So we're down to the last few seconds and I want to remind you what you're going to get when you book the first lesson today. You'll be getting instant access to the ingenious lessons at Real Brave powered by PracticePad. So you can play your favorite songs, leverage your, our method of discovery, deconstruction, and development, and then you can see yourself getting better all from the comfort of your home. And from there, you'll do whatever you want. We recommend at least a year of lessons to get the true journey of what you want to do and what we talked about here started. Using Real Brave's platform, as I've described, 
you will discover a mentor that will work with you weekly and get all the progress tracking tools you need and a roadmap of discovery. This path and process that I have laid out is going to show you how to finally move forward, and make your dream of playing the guitar a reality. So this is it, we're done. You know the path forward now. Click on the big green button on this page and enter your information on the secure checkout page. With that being said, it has been an absolute honor being with you today. I'd love to wish you a great rest of your day. I look forward to everyone that has made the decision to jump in and grab their first lesson with Real Brave on Practice Pad. And I can't wait to hear about your amazing results. Please review us. Let us know how we're doing. Have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you inside. Take care. Talk soon.